for repelling and uh, you know with canyoneering becoming popular there's a bunch of devices built for that too now so the old standby almost everybody uses and what everybody here should have is an ATC and they just uh, Black Diamond makes them it stands for air traffic controller it has nothing to do with climbing it's just the name they came up with but this is the original version it doesn't have all the fancy teeth and the holes in the back and everything else about the only difference between this one and the one they made the first year is that this one comes in colors now they put a, a coating on it to uh, makes it last a little longer, but this way everybody can pick out what color they want as well. So when you're repelling, the whole idea is to attach yourself to the rope and generate enough friction so that you can control how quick you descend. So every repel device relies on it somehow attaching to the rope and then being able to, like I just said, generate enough friction. Something like an ATC is pretty simple. It just goes through the device and clips back into the carabiner. The black webby or the black uh, back on these things is just to keep this tube from coming and scooting up the rope. It doesn't actually serve any structural purpose. Occasionally people will see little kind of wear marks or burn marks on here. That's okay. And sometimes these things even crack. As long as the metal inside of there is still intact, that's what you're concerned with. But it, like I said, it's not actually structural. It just keeps this guy, if this wasn't here, this part would just keep scooting up the rope and you got to keep shoving it back. So that's all it's there for as a keeper. But in this version, all it's doing is its simplest form is you're just creating friction enough that I can literally probably hold myself up with a couple fingers like this. I can take a 150 pound load and I can take five pounds of force and control that 150 pound load while it's sliding down the rope. There's a couple of new versions of it that have come out now too. Black Diamond also makes these. And this is not a Black Diamond commercial. There's plenty of other brands. The Petzl brand is just as good. They all have their little nuances to them. You know, they come in different colors. If that's your important thing, that's fine. You know, it doesn't matter. So this guy now adds a set of teeth on one side. So what this one does is this one can provide a little more friction. So when you're rigging it up, if you rig it up with your brake hand on the side with the teeth, it actually adds more friction. With these thinner ropes, it's actually not a bad idea nowadays. Because if you're doing like a free hanging repel, especially if the rope's wet when you have less friction and everywhere else, those teeth can really make a difference. They can really help. The nice thing about these is if you don't want to use the teeth, and I'm doing this as I'm right-handed, all you got to do is flip it back over and use a side that doesn't have them. And this would provide less friction. So if you're using a thicker rope again, same kind of deal. The teeth are now on the side that doesn't make a difference as far as the friction goes. So they're very handy for that. It's basically the old school figure eight that's been modified slightly to work better with a single rope and also, too, to be able to vary the friction. Now, one of the problems with the old figure eights, and you never rig a piranha this way, by the way, the old figure eights were rigged something along these lines, where it was actually wrapped around the base of the figure eight. The problem with that is that if you weren't careful while you're repelling, you could actually form a square knot, and it would actually be stuck. You'd be trapped while you're repelling. So when Petzl designed these, among other things, what they did is they made it now so that you have to go through the carabiner to rig it up properly. So that with it now through the carabiner, there's no way that it can form that same square knot I just showed you. The way that they've made these new ones now is you can actually change the level of friction too on the device based on what you need. When you're repelling, the length of the repel matters a great deal about how much friction you have on here. If you have, say, a 200-foot repel and you're starting off at the top, there's 200 feet of rope behind you, which probably weighs about 20 pounds. So that's like somebody pulling on your belay device with 20 pounds of force. So to get going initially, it can be very hard to start your rappel. You actually will be almost feeding rope into the device to get going. What they did with the piranha is you can change the level of friction. So in this manner that's rigged right here is the least amount of friction this guy will generate. So if you were going to do a very long rappel, you'd want to start off this way. Now, knowing a little bit about your rappel will help you. If there's a ledge or two along the way, that's awesome because you can stop at those ledges and without disconnecting this, you can actually change the level of friction. So if I say I had that same 200 foot rappel, I start at the top here, I start repelling, I get down to my first ledge, which is 80 feet down. There's a lot less rope hanging behind me now. So, oh, I need a little more friction. All you got to do is drop the rope behind that one ear. And that just increased your friction. Go down to the next ledge, which is another 60 feet down. Boy, I'm getting really fast right now. In other words, the friction keeps going down because the rope behind you is less and less. So you want to generate even more. All you got to do is toss it around back. Now, while you're doing this, you're still clipped into your harness the whole time. So you're never unclipping, so it's safe. You know, especially if you can find somewhere to stand, it's very easy. You just take your weight off there. You only need a little bit, and you just flip it around. 
Another feature too though is even without being able to take your weight off, say you're just doing a free hanging rappel in space, when you get closer to the bottom, you can then start wrapping the sky around the device like that and it generates substantially more friction. So this way you can control your rappel the whole way down. That's especially important when you get into canyoneering because typically you're using a thin single rope and uh, these ropes are pretty fast. You get a little 8 millimeter cord on a 165 foot free hanging rappel and by the time that you're at the bottom you're hanging on pretty tight if you don't have a way to generate enough friction. The ATS and this guy is very similar to a piranha but um, has some more options than the piranha does. It roughly rigs the same way. Think of this part as the 8 part on the piranha. But the rope goes in and then through the beaner and just like the piranha you're able to vary the friction again without disconnecting. This guy you can actually flip it around on that side and like I was showing you earlier about the other methods that will increase your friction as well. Another benefit of this too is if you look at it from the side profile here you'll see that it's curved and you can flip it around end to end on the uh, carabiner and that will generate different amounts of friction as well. So the short end of it is this one has a lot more versatility and a lot more options. Yeah.